What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot to talk about today, so bear with me. NOAA has updated their hurricane forecast, and they are now calling for an active season. They are calling for an above-average season. They are now giving it a 60% chance of it being an above-normal hurricane season. We're now at 25% around a near normal, and the below average is now down to 15%. So, yeah, things are getting pretty interesting. They are calling for 14 to 21 named storms, 6 to 11 hurricanes, and 2 to 5 major hurricanes. Part of the reason they're doing this is because, number one, we've already had five uh, storms going on, including one unnamed subtropical storm. And we're also looking at the Atlantic right now. And the waters have continued to warm up at a pretty alarming rate for you guys. As we can see across much of the Atlantic, we have 30 plus degrees Celsius in the Gulf, Northwestern Caribbean, parts of the Atlantic, parts of the Eastern Caribbean, and parts of the main development region over here. That's what's really driving this hurricane season. And the wind shear and the ocean heat content continue to basically be right on schedule. The OHC, though, is actually uh, way ahead of schedule. It's house money at this point. Over 175 OHC across much of the Caribbean. I wouldn't be surprised if we see over values of over 200 in there. This is These meters are pretty much maxed out. So, yeah, this is a pretty crazy scenario going on right here. But before we get into anything else, we have something else that is brewing in the Atlantic. We have another tropical wave that is expected to come off the coast of Africa and develop into a potentially pretty big scenario going on. Starting about two days out, the European is calling for a tropical wave to develop, uh, to at least come off the coast of Africa and then start to develop a low pressure system in the main development region. And as you can see, it starts organizing and developing. This one actually merges with a tropical wave that is behind it, as well as the intertropical convergence zone right here. And then things start to really get interesting right here. And as you can see, the values down here, the low pressure system is down to 1,004 millibars. This is calling for about a 50 mile per hour tropical storm as we're speaking right here, starting around August 19th. Keep in mind, this is about, uh, this is what, nine days out. So things are a bit uncertain for now, at least for the European. However, I've been cross-checking this with other runs and things have been pretty interesting. Here is the latest from the Icon run. The Icon run has this thing coming off in about two days, starts to organize and develop. It actually continues to merge with that tropical wave behind it right there. It catches up to uh, this one right here. Pressure gets down to 1,002, gets down to 1,000 millibars, actually, gets down to a strong trop- uh, tropical storm route, 60 miles per hour, according to the icon right here, as you can see from 1,000 uh, millibar pressure, 1,001. Um, so things are getting pretty interesting. This is 180 hours out. By the time it starts developing, we're about about five days out or so, but by the time things start to really organize, so... I'm definitely paying attention to this CMC, the Canadian model. Here's what we have going on as of the latest right here. The Canadian model has this thing coming off the coast of Africa. Low pressure system starts to develop right there. Things start to really get interesting right here. The Canadian actually is the strongest model out of all the three that I have shown you. This gets down to a 998 millibar tropical storm. 998 millibars, that's near hurricane strength right there. I'd say the minimum, I'd say the maximum pressure for a hurricane would be around 996 or so. So we're at around a 65 to 70 mile per hour tropical storm, depending on how things go right here. And this is continuing to organize and intensify. The CMC has really been leading the charge out of all of these runs right here. And this is why I'm paying attention to it, because if it was just the GFS or something like that, I would probably brush this off and say, take this with a grain of salt. But this is three model runs we're looking at right here. And yes, still take it with a grain of salt, but you guys also need to pay attention to this, as well as the fact that the NOAA forecast is calling for an active hurricane season. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear forecast for the next few days, the next 10 days actually, from uh, brought to you by the European run. And the shear forecast calls for pretty much this whole thing to clear out in the main development region. We do have a bit of a ridge and trough that brings increased shear over the eastern Caribbean, but that's going to fluctuate off and on. It's not going to stay there for a long time. And by about five days out, 120 hours out, we do see a bit of a resurgence of shear in the main development region, but it clears out a lot in the Atlantic, clears out a lot in the Gulf, parts of the Caribbean. Over here, if we cross-check this with the moisture, 
There is still a bit of dry air, and that's why this tropical wave is going to be merging with this one behind it right here, because that has a more moist pocket, and it's going to merge with that as it traverses through the Atlantic, according to the European. Sahara dust is not nearly as prevalent as it was last month or uh, in the last month or so, so that's pretty interesting going forward right here. Continuing with the shear forecast, we have things really starting to get pretty interesting right here. About 204 hours out, the shear across the MDR really picks up in intensity right here. So that's going to be a bit unfavorable for development, although the moisture in the MDR is going to make up to that, uh, make up that for, or to some extent right here. As we continue to see an increased moisture pocket across the main development region, we do start to see more moisture starting to creep up in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean, parts of the Atlantic as time continues to go on. And by the time we're 240 hours out or so, MDR gets pretty moist. There is some moisture pockets in the Atlantic, maybe in a little bit in the Gulf, part, especially in Florida and the Bahamas. So this is something we need to continue to monitor right here. So that's why I'm paying attention to this. If we go ahead and show you the, uh, go ahead and show you the GF, GFS moisture, at least going forward right here, we continue to see increased moisture. This is about 300 hours out. They're really going for this whole huge amount of moisture for the western atlantic i think this is going overboard quite a bit right here primarily because the european has this thing uh, still pretty dry we're looking at moisture dupe uh, humidity is around 85 90 95 degrees celsius so yeah i'm not entirely sure to trust this i would basically put for the humidity i drop this down afterward by about 30 points or so percentage points and even still that's a moistening atmosphere across much of the Atlantic so things are about to start priming up for hurricane season going into late August and the third week of August for that fact now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs the European ensemble has been pretty interesting the zero Z ensemble really has this thing concentrated right here. Here's the tropical wave we have right here. The European Ensemble is calling for this thing to really ramp up in intensity as it approaches the Lesser Antilles, strengthen to a hurricane potentially as it impacts the Leeward Islands. One of these scenarios has it down to 954 millibars, another up down to 965, which both of those can easily qualify for major hurricane strength right there. However, this is an Ensemble run. This is just two scenarios of a possible of a po a huge amount of possibilities take that with a grain of salt also it's 10 days out so you guys uh, still should pay attention to it but the, nothing is set in stone yet so just keep that in mind but for the time being this continues to move up and potentially some of these ensembles potentially have it impacting the united states others have it keeping out to sea after it impacts the lesser antilles so this is something we need to absolutely monitor and i've been looking at this this is the zero z we're going to show you this 12 z as well just for the heck of it and the 12 z was also showing a, a bit of more of a concentrated scenario although more down the road this is what we have going on this is pr getting pretty constant like already with the European ensembles, the last two runs have been getting more and more concentrated as we continue to talk about this. So this is something we need to pay attention to. The GFS has been a bit more conservative than the European. They still do have scenarios of tropical development, but there are not very many of them. And, and the ones that do have it developing are about like what? Uh, starting uh, This one has it about like le more than seven days out. So the GFS don't don't trust the GF, uh, GFS, especially if it's we're going over 300 hours out. We'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. We're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.